So for this lab, since we're trying to achieve a specific beam expansion ratio, it's more difficult to align this uh, objective because we're using a higher numerical aperture in order to use a smaller focal length. And so the working distance is very small and it's more difficult to align this spatial filter. So you can see that this isn't ideally filtered and that's because the minimum pinhole size we have is 10 microns, whereas our optimum size is six microns. So we're still getting some of these rings. This is also the most that we were able to fill this collimation lens. And that's because of the limited focal lengths of objective lenses that were available. The microscope objective has a focal length of 4.5 millimeters, but ideally we wanted one on the order of 2.7 millimeters. Now, with a, with a we managed to find a five micron pinhole in our spatial filter, it's working much better. Now, the ringing noise that you see here doesn't make it through the lens, so our collimated beam is very well filtered. So now that we have our Keplerian beam expander set up and we're filling this lens very well, what we can do now is use our shear plate to start testing elements for their focal length or radius of curvature for the, for the case of a mirror. So for this one, we're using the low power lens, and what we're going to do is use the fringe spacing and the angle to determine the focal length of the lens. And to do that, we're going to take images of this, and we know the diameter of this circle, and we will use image processing software to calculate using pixels the spacing and the angle. So now we're going to measure the focal length of this curved mirror, and right now we can see we have nice horizontal fringes here. That's because we have this reference lens, and the light is coming to a focus, and this mirror is two focal lengths away from that focus. So the light bounces off, reflects back to that point, and when it comes out through this reference lens, it's collimated. Now we can also move this mirror, and we can move it up to a point where the where it's collimated again. And at this point, the mirror is just at the focal point of that reference lens. So we know that the distance between those two spots is twice the focal length. So now we've got a low power mirror here, and we're looking at the fringes in this shear plate. And the fringes right now, you can see they're approaching the vertical, which means they're approaching the maximum angle and the minimum fringe distance that's resolvable. And at this point, we're going to take an image and we're going to use image processing software to analyze the fringes and find the focal length of this line. So the theory for this lab, we have the Gaussian beam that we worked with last time and the uh, beam waist of 0.469 millimeters, which we then put into our Keplerian beam expander and with a spatial filter and a microscope objective and a collimating lens. And basically what we did here is we filtered out the noise from the lens and expanded it to have a new beam waist so that we could Used to, to, so that we could fill the shear plate later on. And to fill this, we had to calculate that using uh, the expansion ratio of the lens and, the, and optimizing the focal length of our choices here. And so this creates a collimated beam, which brings these plane waves to focus, or brings these plane waves over to this lens, which later on we will use this idea to determine focal lengths of the lenses, uh, focal lengths of mirrors, and radiuses of curvature of mirrors. This will be done using shear plates. We're using a wedge shear plate, which creates uh, fringes when the beam is collimated, as opposed to a non-wedge plate, which has a null fringe, which is less useful. We also use this at 45 degrees because this gives us the best quality. And if you see, uh, this is the XZ plane that you see here. And if I rotate this and look at the YZ plane, you can see that there's a small wedge angle, which creates a linear optical path difference determined by this equation here. Additionally, uh, there's a shear distance to take into account, which is the distance between uh, the edge of one circle and the edge of the other created from the wedge shear plate, and that is determined by this equation here. Finally, uh, if, these, if a spherical wavefront is coming in, it creates two uh, virtual spherical point sources, which then are separated in, X, in both X and Y space here, and creates a rotation and expansion of the fringes up above. And we will be using this equation later to determine the radius of curvature of the mirror based on the fringe spacing. So when measure radiuses with a shear plate, you have a maximum radius and a minimum radius that you can measure. The maximum radius is approaching a collimated beam, and a minimum radius is approaching a focus point. Now with the maximum radius, we're limited by the angle that we can resolve with our eyes. And with the minimum radius, we're limited by the separation of fringes that we can resolve with our eyes. After doing some calculations, we um, got that the maximum radius that we can measure is 6.85 times 10 to the third, and the minimum is 6 meters. Using image processing software, we got an angle of 47.7 degrees and a spacing of 3.8 millimeters. This gives us a radius of curvature of 61.4 meters and a focal length of 61.45 meters. For the low power lens, we got an angle of 73.6 degrees and a separation of 1.7 millimeters. This gives us a radius of curvature of 43.8 and a focal length of 21.79 meters. For the low power mirror, we got an error of 11.1% and for the lens, we got an error of 9.6%. For the other mirror, we got a radius of curvature of 200 millimeters and a focal length of 100 millimeters and an error of half a millimeter due to our eye's resolution.